Hello and welcome back. I'm Bloody Doves, the creator of Baltic Advanced 3062, and I'm here with another informational video for you. Today we're going to be looking at the new game difficulty settings and discussing the settings in detail. And now, before we start, I am going to say you can essentially leave all of these except for except for this one. You can leave all of these except for this one exactly as they are now, and your game will be very playable and very fun. If you don't want to screw around with any of this, you don't have to. All the basic settings are quite good. The only one you'll you really do want to look at is starting planets and mechs. But all the rest of these are basically fine. You'll have a great fun game. So if you don't want to modify anything, you don't have to. Now, if you'd like to know what all these do, stay tuned. We're gonna discuss all of the options. Starting with uh, the first one. This one can only be modified at game start. It's why it's up here. Reduced Argo co upgrade costs makes the Argo cheaper. It makes buying upgrades cheaper. That's all it does. Uh, it's not super impactful. It's only in this special box because you can't modify it part through a game. The rest of these you can modify at any time through the game. This one won't do anything, but the rest of them all will. Uh, friendly Fire. Lots of options. They are all very, uh, very self-explanatory. This is enemies and neutrals. Uh, you can turn these on and off. I typically play buildings only because I don't like friendly fire, but, you know, there you go. Enemies only is kind of the cheaty... Enemies and neutrals is kind of the cheaty ones because it only affects enemies. It doesn't affect you. If you want more challenge, do friendly fire all, but it's friendly fire. You know what it does. Starting planets and mechs. Now, there's a lot of options under here. These are... These define your starting mechs and where you start on the star map. Uh, there are lists of what all these have available to them on the... BTA Wiki, which is bta3062.com. You can go there and you can find the starting lists and read through all the options. Generally speaking, you'll get... Most of these starts will give you five mechs and usually a tank. And some of them will give you a tank. Some of them are not like that. Some of them are a little different. Like the Battle Armor start, which is BA, very hard. Uh, BA will give you a spread of Battle Armor and like one or two mechs. And I think some tanks. Uh, some of them, you know, give you only light mechs, only medium mechs. Some of them are like mech commander start, which is quite easy. You know, it, it depends. These are all very different. Tank start is all, mostly tanks. Irby Derby is all urban mechs. You know, melee is all melee mechs. So on and so forth. This is the the only one you really want to think about if you don't care about the rest of the settings. This is the most important one because it defines the starting mechs. I recommend you go to the wiki and you look up the lists if you really want to know. Parts for mech assembly. This range is from 3 to 8. It's parts for mech assembly. It's how many parts you need to assemble a mech. The higher your settings, the more difficult it gets. The lower your settings, the easier it gets. I like four. That's why it's a default. Mech recovery chance. This defines the recovery chance for when a mech is killed in combat via center torso destruction. If a mech dies via center torso destruction, you have a percent chance to get it back. This defines that percent chance. 100% means you never lose the chassis permanently. 0% means it's, all, it's permanently gone if you lose the CT every time. So... Again, this just is a difficulty modification. 50% is the nice default setting. Contract payment and salvage are how much money you get and how many salvage options you get. Generous is easier, stingy is harder. Very self-explanatory. Commander XP. This is how much XP your commander starts the game with. Uh, 7,000 or 3,500 are kind of the, the the more default options. 10,000 is like your... 10,000 XP is you kind of a god. And 1750 is you're kind of just a crappy starting pilot. Again, just, you know, pick whatever you like. If you want your commander to be special, go with the higher numbers. If you want them to not be special, go with the lower numbers. Advanced Mech Warriors. This controls how often you see Ronin Mech Warriors in the, uh, the hiring hall. You get often normal or rare. I think that's, yeah. No, that's, Ron that's Ronin Prevalence. Sorry, my, my apologies. That's Ronin Prevalence down here. Advanced Mech Warriors is the other one. Advanced Mech Warriors covers how good the pilots in the hiring hall are, not including Ronin. So, your Advanced Mech Warriors are going to have better stats and more starting skills. It makes them more expensive to buy and to, you know, pay for, but it makes them... It makes the game easier because once you can afford to get them, they are better replacements if your Mech Warriors die. This is not a very impactful setting, but it's there, so there you go. Pots per system. How many dudes are in the hall? Very easy. Range from 10 to what? 1? Yeah. Again, not super interesting. Mech Warrior Progression, Exponent, and Multiplier all apply to the amount of XP it takes to gain new skill ranks and the amount of XP your your Mech Warrior receives from doing stuff. Uh, I'm not going to get into the hardcore math because it's not super important. Basically, fast is easier, slow is harder. That's all you really need to know about these. If you want your people to level up slower and to be 
Worst pilots for longer, set these to slow or very slow. If you want them to level up quickly and become gods in the cockpit very fast, set it to fast. Lethality. This defines how often your pilots die when things that ha happen that would kill them, such as losing the center torso on your mech or, you know, being uh, taking heavy injuries and such. So you, if you want your pilots to die a lot and be a meat grinder of a campaign, set it to lethal, they're more likely to die when bad things happen. If you don't care, set it to never and your dudes will never die. Ronin prevalence is what I was talking about Ronin. This is how much how many Ronin do you want to see in the hall? Do you want to see 100% Ronin, 50% Ronin, 20% Ronin, or never? This setting is a little deceptive. Most Ronin are mech-only pilots. They are not vehicle pilots. There are some vehicle pilot Ronin in BTA, but there aren't many. If you set this to 100% and you're doing a tank playthrough, you're going to have a hard time getting pilots. Just because most Ronin aren't tankers. This is a, this can be that. That's why we have this set to 20. So most 50% uh, of random gen pilots are tankers. So you're going to be able to have some tank pilots available to you. If you're not doing a tank playthrough, you don't care about tanks, then the setting is just for fun. Starting money, lower money, harder, higher money, easier. You know, how much cash do you want to start with? Very easy. Mech bay C bills. This just defines how much things cost in the mech bay. So, like, you know, when you're doing refits and stuff. Again, you know, expensive, harder, uh, cheap, easier. Normal's fine. Shop selling and scrap return is just... Shop selling is how much uh, price you get for selling things to the store. Scrap return is how much you get for scrapping mech parts from the mech bay. Again, you know, bigger numbers, better. Smaller numbers, harder. Or bigger numbers, easier. Smaller numbers, harder. There you go. Mech maintenance. This just defines the amount of money that it takes to... Uh, pay for your mech each month. Also, you can mouse over this, by the way, and see what all these do. They all say things. So, if you have it set to easy, your mechs are pretty cheap in the, at the end of every month. If you set it to hard, they're more expensive. Also, you'll notice that as this bar goes up, the picture over here changes. So, if you do... If you set it to... All super hard stuff... The uh, the Atlas Skull, the Atlas Skull gets redder and redder. It, it becomes the Angry Skull. The harder you make your game, there you go. That's just kind of a fun visual thing we did a while ago, just for kind of chuckles. That doesn't really mean anything. It's just kind of a visual indicator for the difficulty bar is going up. Also, all this difficulty bar does the total score multiplier is at the end of the career. At the end of your 1200 days of the career, you get a score, and this just changes your score multiplier. So, the higher into this number, the more score you get if you make it to the end of the career. That's all this means. It doesn't actually have a mechanical gameplay effect, it is all just for stats. And that is the difficulty settings. Very simple, mostly self-explanatory. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments down below, and I'll be happy to answer. But, it's pretty easy. Notably, you can change any of these outside, you can't change this one, but you can change any of the rest of these during a game. The only one that won't change anything is starting Plex and Planets, because you already started. The rest of these can all be changed during gameplay, anytime you're on the Argo. You can shuffle these around and it, the game will adjust on the fly. But anyway, that's it. That's all I got for this video. I'll see you in the comments. If you've got any questions, ask down below. And I will see you in the next one. Have a good one, folks.